Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Sconcy Business, and today we're here with Jeff Pulver, who is the co-founder of Debrief. He's also done a lot of other stuff in uh, in in blockchain and outside of blockchain. Um, I, I guess maybe you could tell us a little bit about that because you've you've done a lot. Um, so if you want to give everyone a little bit of an introduction to what you've done in the past and then what you're kind of up to now, that'd be awesome. Uh, hi, so thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I am Jeff, uh, and uh, my internet adventure started in 1994. And in 1995, I got involved with uh, audio and video on the internet. And in fact, in 95, I launched the first uh, phone network ever on the internet called Free World Dial-Up which had three evolutions of life. Uh, FWD uh, at one point was uh, phone to phone, and then we were PC to phone, and then we were just end to end IP. And that ran until about 2008. And in the interim, in between, I was fortunate to help bring together what became the global uh, voice over IP industry, which today probably is a $2 trillion market. And, wa and I created the Trade Tone Conference, which became the go-to place for people to do business in the industry. And that ran for uh, a number, ran from, uh, you know, I launched the precursor to Vaughn in, 90, in September 96. And I ran that through March of uh, 2008. And while I was running the conferences, I had ideas for businesses that I thought should exist. And uh, I'm very grateful that I had an opportunity to uh, launch a company, which ultimately became Vonage which was the first successful broadband phone company. I also, another wide product, and that actually came out of the testing I was doing with uh, Free World Dial-Up. Another company spun out called Vivox. If, if you know anyone who plays Fortnite, uh, the voice engine that tries Fortnite is from Vivox. Vivox became the wow. largest the largest multiplayer, massive multiplayer online gaming uh, voice engine and platform in the world. We, we had deals in the early days with uh, Sony and EA, and uh, we were the voice that added voice to Second Life and so that was that space. I, I've, uh, over the course of the last bunch of years, I've started about 20 companies, uh, wow. mostly in the internet communication space. I've also invested in over 400 startups, which sounds like a lot, but at the time I was doing it, it didn't feel like a lot. And I've run conferences. I, I'm very much a believer in helping to people to connect and to engage and to communicate um, on the internet and to uh, also be themselves in a very soulful way. Uh, I, I believe in social entrepreneurship and really being your dream and living what you believe in and having and creating opportunities that hopefully make the world a better place and at the same time help move us forward. And you know, in the we're recording this in the days of. Uh, of COVID-19. And uh, on one hand, yeah, most of the world is locked down, but we've never had a world so connected. There are over 3 billion people who have the ability to go on, on the internet today. And so we, we can leverage this opportunity to connect people around the world and, and use the internet as a way to disintermediate differences and help bring together people. And you're seeing that. You're seeing good. You're seeing challenging times, but I, I believe in positivity, and I believe in hope, and I believe in tomorrow, and that, that the history is not written, that, that we take this where we are right now when we go forward. And uh, it, it was a few years ago when I was exploring blockchain. I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I play around with different technologies for different reasons. And what, one of the challenges in the communications industry has always been back office systems and people not relying or believing that their phone bill was accurate that their billing was mm -hmm. inaccurate, that people always had these discrepancies and, or didn't trust, right? Although you find that with utilities, what's ironic is that the more you don't like a company, the more you trust them with your personal data, like utility companies and phone companies. And, and, and branding is a big thing too, and how do you become that brand? But you know, when I first started, started thinking about blockchain uh, in the era of communications, there are a couple of things that I wanted to figure out how to do better. One was billing. And the other one was the elimination of spamming and what we deal with in the U.S., robocalling. The fact that I get unsolicited phone calls with fake identities calling my phone all the time to the point that I don't pick up my phone anymore. Right? I only basically mm. answer people who I know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and text spamming is really ridiculous. And so if I had an opportunity to redefine communications again and create an infrastructure which allowed people to communicate with those people, only those people they wanted to speak to, only those people they wanted to connect to. Uh, I thought that was something exciting and new. And you mix that in the era of blockchain and being able to create a, a, an infrastructure that other people could leverage. So 
when I did Free World Dial Up, and we, what I learned was a lot of different things. In the in the peak of FWD's existence, we had over a million subscribers. And I learned, and I thought, okay, I'll build an app on FWD, and everybody will use my app. But good the, on the positive side, I was using open standards and open protocols, so we provided a means for people to, to configure their own devices onto the network. But I thought, okay, I know I'm going to create the best, the greatest communication app there ever was. I spent a year and a half building this app, uh, app we call Pulver Communicator, and it was open standards, but it was so heavily over-engineered that the only person I think who ever used it was me. Uh, and I learned a lot that, you know, sometimes the hardest thing to do is something simple. And and so with the chance to do it all over again, I, you know, I, I learned that, that support open standards, open protocols, and let the user decide what apps they want to use to use your infrastructure. And so I had an opportunity uh, a couple of years ago to start exploring that future. And the origins of Debrief really come from looking to redefine communications, create a network that others could come on to, bring their optional services, bring their value-added services, and communicate through and through it. And so we, we ended up uh, creating a proof of concept, if you will, a DApp, which, is, which you could see what one could do on the network. Uh, I am actively looking for software developers and uh, people who already have products shipping who would like to level, leverage the security of, of, of a blockchain network and know that the endpoints will only be those that they that are actually authorized to be on there to connect and communicate with us. So my, my focus is the infrastructure. So it's like me trying to in introduce, it's like you and I talking in 1993 and I'm trying to explain to you what the internet is and what we could do yeah. with it. And so I'm looking at Debrief as the platform that will help enable end-to-end -end communications between parties. And, you know, in telecom, a lot of things are centralized. A lot of things are centralized. And so you, the, the phone company puts themselves in the middle of everything. Uh, yeah. Debrief is, is as decentralized as one could be. You know, we don't know the content. We don't know the context. I mean, one of the biggest challenges we all have using Gmail or any type of intrusive mail system that's for free, quote-unquote, is that somehow uh, you and I write to, about a topic and all of a sudden I see an, a Google ad for that topic just magically appear. What's yeah. creepier is when you and I may speak and all of a sudden without doing anything else, an ad just appears near me. I don't know how that is. Maybe it's a coincidence. It's some serendipitous moment of computer time. But in our case, we don't have access to the content of what's shared between the parties. It's an end-to-end -end network where we're not in the center of it. We're not, uh, you know, we're not holding your data. And so mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know the content. I don't know the context of the content. So there's no uh, nothing to worry about there. And and what our focus really has been is redefining communications. If I had a chance in 2020 to look at into the future, what would I like to see? That's what we're focusing on, and that's what we're building. And and for me, this is a, a preview into where communications will go. And so, you know, on one part, the legacy phone companies are stuck being legacy phone companies. Innovation is really, really, really hard uh, in the yeah. companies who want to change. And you have some great innovators in Canada. You have great innovative companies around the world. But most of the innovation that you see, most new services that are launched are not built at the company. They're actually purchased. And I'm talking mm -hmm. about an architectural change here that I believe in the future, phone quote-unquote phone companies will want to deliver, but they'll be challenged to. And, you know, and, and as we're seeing people go... Um, evolve in this set in this internet enabled communication paradise known as broadband internet I, I believe that we have an opportunity to to for to empower other people to develop services that will be that will be deployed on our infrastructure and so um and it's exciting and it's fun and it's uh it's one of the things that keep me engaged and thinking and and believing that that we will always evolve this you know for me um I believe that voice is the killer application. No matter how fancy we get, no matter how advanced we are, granted 3D holographic imaging done the way that they've done in Star Trek and Star Wars, if we can get that, that's pretty darn cool. Outside of that and outside of the, uh, the great work of, uh, of Hollywood trying to show us what the future could be, the power of voice of in itself is amazing. And that in mm -hmm. times of trouble, right, just reaching out and literally connecting with somebody in a meaningful way is everything. And so for me, helping to focus on the basics of, of delivering a communication network 
that reliably allows you to communicate only with those that you want to connect to is a great thing. And it means that when I'm on the network, I don't worry about who's calling me because I know everyone who's been onboarded, who I want to communicate with. And uh, I like that. And so, you know, and, and I look at this being um, a greenhouse, if you will, for other people to come in and play. And and because we're you know we're working with open stand, with with uh, open source and we're in, in, and encouraging people to go to our GitHub. Uh, frankly, if you looked at it and say, "Gee, this is really nice, but I really like to have a function that does something else," can you do it? We can say yes or no, maybe. Uh, and if others are interested in it, we could, on the network level, help empower and enable a, a feature. And you know, because I'm not saying that what we have is everything. Because we don't really always know what we want until we have it, <laughs> and then you know it's, then you feel it. And so, I'm excited about where this can go. And uh, for people who've also watched the evolution of voice on the internet, that you know, we we looked for this nirvana where we can actually take almost any device and configure it and put it on a network, and it almost never happens. And we're actually, after many years of trying, on the on the backs of so many other people who've been forcing forcing the world forward. We're about there now, and so so debrief is really about you know communications and providing the middleware that will empower others to connect. Uh, last I checked, we've had a, a few, I think, three thousand plus downloads of our app, which is really a demonstration. I'm not here to promote the app at all, other than to say, hey, this is what we've done uh, as an example of what one could do. Um, in in this uh, era of the pandemic. Uh, uh, imagine being Zoom and waking up, and and going from 10 million users to having you know being the no- number one app in the world, and then taking a lot of heat because the security that people expected you to have you didn't have. Now, mm-hmm. if if you've ever been a product manager or dealt with people's roadmaps, I, I'm pretty sure that the uh, security laxes that Zoom first faced um, were on people's roadmaps to fix. And uh, also to the to the trying to make the Zoom experience as easy as possible, there could have been infighting because people just wanted it simple, one click, and you're in a Zoom, and that seems reasonable. Except that no, no one expected it to be so popular that you would post publicly post a link, and all of a sudden you're getting Zoom bombing because not not because you don't have security, because they're just clicking, and and people didn't think through the process of oh do this, do this, do this, and we'll fix it. The fact of whether or not the end-to-end video was encrypted or not, well, technically probably it wasn't. They, I believe they admitted it wasn't. I don't believe that was their security lacks as much as people complaining years ago that their homes were being invaded because people were logging into their routers because they weren't changing their default passwords. So we're talking about early, early days, about silliness, about, you know, when I had a software company, uh, or my first one, and people called up for customer support, the engineers who answered the phone would uh, would suggest to the person before they called, you know, did you uh, read the fine manual? We'd say RTFM. Uh, F uh, didn't necessarily always mean fine. But, but we were trying to say to the people that, you know, maybe the problem's not ours. But how do, you, how, how do you don't want to minimize it? You don't want to deflect it. And so you got to deal with it. And so um, I, I believe that people, you know, Zoom benefited really by being the platform that most people went to because we're in a time where they want interoperability. They don't know this word, but interoperability between multiple operating systems and multiple mm-hmm. devices. Whether you're on Android or iOS, whether you're on a Windows desktop, whether you're on Chrome, you'd like to have the ability to see the person and talk to the person. At least that's my belief. And so Zoom happens to fit right well. You know, what happened to Google's Hangout? What happened to Skype? What happened to all these other platforms? Oh, they do it too. But it wasn't in the mindset. And and for me, at the debrief, you know, I would welcome third-party developers, people with successful apps, whether it is Zoom, who want, like to see what blockchain you know, security can get them if they like to come. And it's, we're not limited to them. We're limited to anyone who just is creative, who's interested to bring their app over and play. Um, and, and there was a, you know, whenever, you know, this pandemic is different, you know, we're... <laughs> living in altered times, whether we want to or not. But the one thing that's keeping us together as people is the ability to communicate, being able to keep the communication infrastructure up, being able to be close to people, even if we're confined to where we are. And um, and I'm grateful that if we had to have a pandemic, <laughs> that we have it, in, at least in the era of the broadband internet, where the future is in front of us, and at least we have the basics figured out, because if this would have happened 20 years ago, there would have been a lot more people feeling a lot more alone because the broadband internet had not happened, dial-up wasn't good enough, 
and communications was just starting to happen live. And so we're, 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 we're much further along in the ecosystem's growth. And so uh, I, I do believe that we, we have a lot to learn, uh, but being able to communicate and, and be, uh, uh, be active and be, and in my background happens to be an amateur radio. So before I got involved with the internet, you know, as a kid, I define, I free world dial up, uh, was inspired by my days as a ham operator where I would phone, do phone patching, where in times of emergency uh, communication crisis, I, I would actually take somebody from New York, they want to talk to somebody in Canada, I would actually do a phone patch and make phone calls. It didn't matter what the phone calls cost, it matter was getting the communication delivered. And um, we're now at a time where, you know, being able to Share, share messages to loved ones is back in that critical role and just knowing that people are okay matters and so and and unfortunately due to where covid has happened people are, are, are people who are put to hospitals on ventilators they, they're isolated from their family right they don't even get to be there so so having a presence and being able to communicate some way so facetime and things like that mattered a lot for people being able to see uh, one, one of the things that i did achieve and which i'm very um grateful for to have a government that listened to me and, and just the fact that I had a premonition about it. But in, in 2003, I woke up one day. And in 2003, we were, we were past the dot-com era crash. We were past the, non -effect, the effects of 9-11 in the States. And we were uh, past the uh, telecom crash. And I realized, oh my goodness, the phone companies, at least that's what I thought, that they wanted, that, that, that pretty soon they're going to take, they're going to look at, at broadband as a threat to their future. And I had to save the future for everyone else. I wanted to keep a creative and greenfield op greenfield opportunity, greenhouse opportunity for creativity and innovation on broadband. So I went to the Federal Communications Commission, the uh, FCC, the uh, Canadian version of CRTC, and I asked for regulatory clarity that voice communication uh, that doesn't touch the legacy phone network for not to be regulated as telecom. And uh, nobody told me it was impossible to do this. I had no idea what I was up against. I had no idea how challenging or difficult it is. But amazingly enough, uh, a year almost to the day, on February 12, 2004, the chairman of the FCC, Michael Powell, Chairman Powell, he issued something known as the Pulver Order. And this is why today things, things, things like FaceTime and WhatsApp and Messenger are all free. And the people who provide those services are not regular as telecom providers. And that... The, the, the Pulver Order has been uh, honored in over 100 countries around the world. And so it, it's helped connect and bring the world together and change the business models of many companies. Instead of being telecom companies, they became data companies. A company like Verizon, for example, actually even told me this directly when I was at a meeting several years after the Pulver Order happened. They told me, look at everything we've done since 2004. Because they started the conversation with saying, Jeff, you won. I didn't know what I won. <laughs> But they said that me petitioning the FCC and getting the pulver order granted changed the way they did business. And they said, if you look at all their acquisitions, if you look at how they structured themselves, how they position themselves, everything's data focused. And so I didn't know I could do that. I had no idea also how many times I have to go to Washington and lobby and do this and do that. But it happened. And because it happened, we're now able to take it for granted. So there are many people, millions and millions of people that are using these technologies who don't know that uh, living away, we don't have them. And so... Um, I have that too. So, so when I think about what I've done in the communication era, there's a lot of things I've contributed to uh, where I didn't invent anything, but I was able to gather the troops and help them do things. Uh, occasionally, I did invent a product that I marketed, which because I thought it should exist. I had back in 2002, I, uh, I, I actually launched the first ever Wi-Fi SIP phones, which was a big thing back then. Nowadays, it may not seem so cool, but back then it was super interesting. And we're at the early, early days at that edge of innovation. I like hanging out at the where those where the edge of innovation meets the opportunity, and and where things just grow and go. And so with debrief, I'm looking at another edge, the edge where blockchain meets communications, where we now have a platform for innovation, for opportunity, and for growth, unbounded growth. And in, and just like true network effect, the value of our network goes up as we as we onboard more end users, more people want to come on board. And then creative types who want to launch services, because on Free World Dial, if that happened organically, that somebody came on and created a service and launched it, and now everyone who's connected to the network could benefit from it. And so it's it's a very similar approach, because I've lived this, <laughs> I've I've lived that route before, and it had a really happy outcome. So I'm I'm looking to what's, um, you know, if you don't learn from history, it's going to repeat itself. I am learning from history, uh, applying what I where I went wrong. 
and being forward thinking where things can go. And so I'm very uh, bullish about these opportunities. And uh, no matter where we are in the world, the need to communicate never goes away. In fact, in trying times, the need to communicate goes up. Uh, there was a recent story in the New York Times I saw that, surprise, surprise, but during the era of the pandemic, people are just using telephones more. People are actually reaching, pick, reaching to their phones and calling people and talking. Imagine that. So uh, it, it's, it's old school, but talking is talking, and it's, it's sometimes all we have. So, uh, so I've been involved in many different things, and, uh, and, and I like to go deep on the technology, and I like to see where things can evolve into, and I, I've done work... Um, uh, from my from I guess ideaizing things to doing them to to collaborating and working on public policy and really gathering people together to see what's up and just to, just to look at how we connect how we communicate how we how we connect the dots I um, was an early user on Twitter it was uh, I invested I was I actually was one of the not only was an early user on Twitter, I actually had an opportunity to be an early investor and it was one of the first times in my life that I actually had a chance to invest in a product I was using. And I, I kind of liked the way that Twitter gave us a back channel on the way that we communicate and the way we connect. And in some ways, that's still there today, even though it's so many other things are being Twitter is being used for. Having that back channel and the ability to reach out and, and occasionally contact that person you want to reach is still priceless. And I, I still like that ability that people are able to reach out and connect and have meaningful connections. There was a time in the uh, 1994, 3, 5, when the email was new. And there was actually a book I had called The Email Address of the Rich and Famous. And occasionally I write to somebody, email address, they responded. And I didn't realize, no, no, it truly was the person you, whose email address it was. And so for a moment in time, you had these like very cool connections. And if it was just saying hello, it's like saying hello, but it mattered. And, and, and Twitter does that. And when you have a, you know, a meaningful relationship with somebody, you know, the kind of connections that... I may not talk to somebody for three years or four years, but I see them and the conversations continue when we see each other. Those are the type of email relationships I've had with some people for a very, very long time that you just need to connect once in a meaningful mm -hmm. way. And regardless of the medium, we're able to deliver the message. And, 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 and as humans, we're able to process everything and move things forward. And so I'm... Uh, I'm super excited. What can I tell you? I, uh, I I cannot deny my background in communications. I um, I've tried. I've done other things, but it always comes back down to helping people to connect. It's who I am. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Um, for uh, for debrief, is your main like target for like just anyone, or is it uh, like you're looking at like Skype and platforms like that? Or are you looking at telecommunication companies as well? Like what is, uh, wh who, who are you like trying to get involved with, with uh, Debrief? We're, we're open to anyone who like to connect with us. You know, there, there are some telecom companies where they have so many firewalls in their offices that it's very hard um, mm. for them to engage in a skunk, skunk works project outside their firewall. Okay. Uh, I've actually done work years ago at Bell Canada. I've I've consulted at uh, tel I've, I have friends from Telus and Rogers. I, I and and uh, and so I can appreciate the uh, challenges one would have in trying to take an existing infrastructure and connect. That said, people do R and D. People have labs. People do play, and so we're we're you know imagine we are the phone network. We are a, a communications network. And uh, we're open to people who would like to connect with us, uh, launch services on us, uh, app developers, people who've created really, sla really, really snazzy, cool apps that do interesting things. They're there. I mean, in the future, think about conversational interfaces. Think about how, how because to me, it's not about browsing anymore, but it's, it's using a conversational interface and AI to connect and help us communicate more effectively, more thoroughly. Think about mm -hmm. how we do commerce, how, how people can actually do all these different things. So in terms of who we're looking for, uh, sure, if someone has a product that has billions of users, by all means, they're invited to come and be on our network too. Uh, we do have a published set of APIs which are available to be programmed. Uh, if someone is just curious what we can do, they could download the D app and they could play with their friends and see what we've done. But again... I'm not looking for anyone to imagine the future based on what we've done. I'm just saying that if you're a developer and you're just curious what what's possible today, we could showcase what's possible today. 
Uh, and if there is a, you know, a quote unquote telecom operator infrastructure provider who would like to connect with us, we're open for biz dev, we're open for business, we're open for opportunity. Uh, so, 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 you can, so yes, on the communication side, interesting app developers, um, particularly frustrated app developers that wish they could do things on their iPhones or other Android devices but never could. Now they may find that we can because the, the network's been created by people with, who share equal frustrations in terms of delivering communication services. So we're, we're and we're experimenting, right? We're, we're still in the early stages of the future. So, and we're open so that if you have a certain way of seeing the way things should work and you just need something done, we could check to see can we just do it you know we're 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 still there so we're uh we're early uh and and in terms of who can deploy services you know for me it's not about e-commerce because after 20 years drop the e it's about commerce it's about communications it's about community it's about connecting and for anyone who's interested in any of those things we have an infrastructure that helps enable endpoints to connect to endpoints it's how you visualize that opportunity is your so we're only limited by our own imagination. We're only limited to how others see the opportunity that we're doing and how they relate into it and around it and with it. And so, if I had a you know, but yes, if I if there were people who had apps that had large down number of users and they like to be in a more secure environment and like to see what's possible, they're invited. If people have other networks who like to cross-connect with our networks and somehow we can interoperate and connect on a protocol basis, it'd be interesting too. So it's it's uh, it's both end users, operators, service providers, and, and various types of service providers. And, and, and really, we can be a place where we get to do the future ahead of you know, mainstream um, communication companies because they just have the infrastructure and legacy to deal with where we don't have that. It's much like how come broadband happened in certain countries because they didn't have a, a legacy phone network to worry about it. Why did cellular happen? Why did 4G or 5G roll out? Because they didn't have anything else. So they're not, even the, even the countries themselves didn't have other infrastructure. You're seeing people in third world countries with amazing tech because they were able to deploy because they had nothing else. They were not replacing anything. They were just putting stuff up for the very first time. And in some mm. ways, we're empowering that future on our network today without the worry about legacy. Yeah, yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm curious, uh, how did you come up with the name for Debrief, or or or, or what was the motivation behind uh, making that the name? I, I am not in charge of branding. Okay, fair I, enough. I, I, uh, I I've, I've branded a few things. I'm very good at adding words to the vernacular when I'm trying to uh, make a point, uh, particularly when I'm doing presentations. Uh, but I, I think that the uh, the part of the etymology of the naming. Started out originally, I guess, from a D app perspective, trying to talk about distributed apps, and mm. and then really we're not about our app, right? We're really about the infrastructure. We're really about the middleware, the the network that we're creating. And so we, it, we've been playing with a, a name. And then of course, what happens is you want to launch, you want to reach out and literally connect with other people. So you need it. You can't call it Project X. You can't call it Project Y. You have to call it something. And and, and, and brief in some ways is because I like doing things really long. So it's sort of an inside joke that to be brief with what we do uh, and short with what we say so that it, it, it be con so we can connect. And, it's, and it, there's a brevity toward those connections. And it happened to be a domain available. So you, you have you know, different things. And, and it, it's really about how to be remembered. And so we have a great marketing people and great minds. And so I, I've learned several things one of them is branding is done by branders and so i i i i i have an opinion what i like what i don't like and uh uh there are times when i um you know i i have invest i literally have invented words but as far as company names you know it's um like vonage for example like i created the term von back in 94 uh to stand for voice or video on the internet and vonage mm. Uh, which Jeff Citron created, took he took Von from he took the Von that I did and, and 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 said Vonage is really the age of voice on the net. So so genius. So so I appreciate and grateful to have smart people near me <laughs> to to help make things happen. So on on, on debrief, it's you know it, it is it's what works. Uh, 
And, and that's the other thing about having a good team is you, you get good tech, you get good marketing, you get good positioning. And um, I, I, I focus on vision and I focus on making sure that where we are is where we're at and that we, we, need, to ch we need to alter course, we need to uh, uh, add complexity or add, you know, add functionality. We've, we, we evaluate and we deliver. So it's, uh, uh, it's an interesting moment, I have to say. It's, it's a, and it's a fun place to be. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So um, what are some of the things that are in the works right now for Debrief? Or like, what are some big updates that we might see uh, in the next year? So, uh, like, we'll say the next year. I would, well, I, I, what I would say is to look to our blog and to look to our, look to the website for those types of announcements. There, there are strategic partnerships that are underway. Some have been announced. Some, some are being worked on. Uh, there are people that I'm talking to uh, who who are interested in using our infrastructure to help enhance their own businesses. And so the timing of that is really up to the companies, not up to me. And I, I'm not in a position to make any announcements at this very moment in time, other than to say that people have been reaching out to me and they're curious um, about about what I'm working on. And they're curious how they can how they could wrap what I'm working on and stuff that they're working on to collaborate. And so I would I, I believe over the next number of months we will see some announcements. And and again it, it's also how how we evolve. And so you know every company, you know changes itself, redefines itself, pivots, and, 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 and repositions because we learn things. You know, I, it's sort of like uh, talking to, a, talk to five friends of yours. Ask them what they grad, what the, if they went to university, what they graduated doing. Ask them what they're doing today. Yeah. In most cases, people are not necessarily living their degree because they went to college. They knew they needed to get educated, but they didn't necessarily know what they wanted to do. So they, get, they took something they were passionate about or something which they got talked into doing, and then during their life, they then found their passion, they found their sweet spot, they found their focus. And that's what they kind of narrow go, narrowly go into. I have a grand vision for where Debrief could be. And, and being the middleware provider, I believe, is our sweet spot. I believe that we help connect the genius endpoints and help drive innovation globally, galactically, for communications future. That's where I see us. So we're, you know, in some ways, we're the infrastructure. So you don't see us because you, what you'll see is other people delivering products that we empower. We deliver certain. We we are the reason why people can do certain services. So we are hidden, uh, and at the same time, if we did not exist, they couldn't do what they're doing. So how we position ourselves and how we evolve is going to be a ma matter of time, and it requires the feedback from customers, from end users, if you will from both the people playing with our apps just to see if they like what we're doing, just because you like to know, and then the software developers and, and, and infrastructure partners to see how we collaborate and how we make the most of the opportunity. So there's, um, we have to be uh, open to feedback and uh, not headstrong. We can be passionate, we can be, uh, and deliver on message. And I and I rem and I remain open that uh, you know by 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 having a GitHub by by supporting pro open protocols, we're we're not limiting ourselves by our own imagination. In fact, we're flipping it, and we're only bounded by the collective imagination of those people who discover what we're doing, and we see where we can work together. Um, and that's what's fascinating to me because you know we we just help create the environment and we help. Uh, uh, encourage uh, third-party developers to onboard onto us, and we share with them what we're doing and get feedback. And so that's sort of the the big thing is, uh, look, any of us could write an app, but it's different when you create the network where you empower so many other people to have their dreams and their visions fulfilled. And so that's that's what I'm focusing on these days is helping to empower the genius of others, um, and together we create value. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's an awesome vision. So applying that vision, what do you think or where where do you hope to see debrief in like the long term, like five, 10 years? What would be, you know, saying everything works out perfectly? Where would you hope to see a debrief in like a five, 10 year run? Well, I'll say that Free World Dialup launched in 95. It evolved in three different generations by 2008. In 2001, I, and during the in the in the interim time frame of FWD being this test platform or this global interoperable platform, 
um, I saw a need for people who um, literally were broken, brokering telecom minutes to get together and do business. And I created something in 1998 called the Minutes Exchange. And the Minutes Exchange um, pivoted in 2001 and became Vonage. It went from brokering telecom minutes to actually being the platform that it, that became the successful, first successful broadband phone company. And then and, and their success, the success of Vonage is the reason why globally around the world, every phone company, every cable company now offers digital phone service. We, did, we, we were the proof point. Vonage today has, you know, last I checked anyway, was multi-billion dollars in revenue. When they went IPO, they had, I think, a $3 billion valuation. Today, I think they're at one, one and a half billion or so. I didn't check today, check, check today's price, but we're, we're there and we created value for everybody. And Vonage is flourishing today and they're growing around the world and they have users and products and, and staff worldwide. So the point was that the company started, you know, very, very uh, humbly in 98, launched in 2001, went public, and I think, I think it's 2005. And it's doing quite better today than ever, ever before. And this is 2020. We are in it for the long term. You know, the, the first few years are going to be what they are. I, I do look for us to be the platform that innovation happens on. I'm looking for us to be the platform that the future gets defined on. If we just inspire people, great. I am looking to onboard people who will then have their own customer bases. So somebody who has literally has uh, you know, 100 million users may want to launch a secure blockchain uh, you know, network, a sub, a sub on our network, and they, and they end up adding you know, a million users for themselves. So, so we're the, we, we can count those million endpoints as our endpoints, too, because it's really we're, we're, we're the uh, solution provider for that. But we're not limited to one company. We're, li we're only bounded by those people who discover us and how we do things. And so there are services we'll probably deploy ourselves because we can and that others will then use to wrap into what they deploy. And, and, and just, just, it just makes more sense. It's more the economics are in favor if we deploy certain things. And other people can come in and they, they be that provider. So in terms of where we're going, this is a long-term play. I, I am not saying that we're here to replace Bell Canada or TELUS or, or, or Rogers or AT&T or Verizon. But if we end up doing something like that, I wouldn't be that surprised. We, we, we have, we're only bounded by our imagination. We're only bounded by how we look at and how we see the future and how it evolves and, and be proactive about it. So, so in terms of where we are long term, I would like to believe 10 years from now we're growing still. And that, um, you know, I had no idea when Vivox and Vivox spun out of free world dial up too. I had no idea that today, <coughs> excuse me, that today Vivox would end up being the, the largest provider of hosted voice services anywhere in the world for massive multiplayer online games. So, you know, could, uh, you know, could debrief empower a company that wants to offer hosted voice services for games? Sure. I mean, we could do so many things. You know, I want to focus network infrastructure middleware that's where i'm that's where i'm taking the ship if if a awesome. friend wants to leverage the ship and because it's really you know we're also the ocean <laughs> and they want to come in and and plan things and play we're ready to play we if people want to build a an alternative uh reality universe like second life you have the next generation second life and they want to be they want to power the endpoints securely to communicate we could be a communication network for them. It just, re it just requires, you know, aug augmented, you know, whether it's augmented reality, whether it's uh, virtual reality. If you want people to be able to communicate in your worlds, we very well could be the communication provider for those worlds. We're, again, we focus on what we do the best and we partner with others so that we have a relationship. So in terms of, where we're, of what we end up accomplishing, we're unbounded at this point. You know, we're not, nothing is cast in stone other than our, our desire to be successful, to be open, to help deliver a future which is better than today. Awesome, awesome. That's that is uh, definitely a, a really ambitious and um, really amazing long-term strategy. And I, I like how you sort of compared to uh, what happened with Vonage and and how how that grew out and 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 how you hope to do something similar. So, um, how would you compare Debrief to something? maybe similar or I guess how you're 
I guess, uniquely different uh, to similar projects or projects in the space? Or if you think there's really just like no one else trying to do what you guys are doing? with I, 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 I don't I have not become aware of anyone crazy like us trying to be middleware. Uh, most of the projects I've seen in the space of focusing very uh, centrally, even if they're attempting to be decentralized, they're applications. They're standalone. They're in, not interoperable with anyone else other than themselves. And so mm-hmm. while that's interesting, it's also limiting. And, yeah. uh, I, and, I, and I don't take the position that one person is an island. I, I believe that we need to, at this moment in our time, we need to connect as many people together and empower the collective genius to move the communication uh, world forward into its future, which is unwritten. And so, um, you know, if, if, you know, if we are talking about network infrastructure, you know, we, we're a different kind of network. You know, we're, we're not AT&T. We're, n- we're not Rogers. We're not Deutsche yeah. Telekom. We're, we are who we are. We have components that uh, ensure uh, security, ensure that you will not get spammed, to ensure that the endpoints are, are, in fact, whom you want to be communicating with in a secure uh, and safe manner. Um, and so, no, I am not aware of anyone who is uh, tr- attempting to be the uh, secure communication network of the future today. Uh, I, I've not found anyone. I've, uh, you know, I, I've looked and I just, you know, it, it's just, and, and that's sort of why, you know, this is not brief, but <laughs> this is why I, I shy away from saying, well, this application represents us because it doesn't. It just represents an, a moment in time of what one can do. And so I've, uh, I've seen projects, apps, if you will, um, that get downloaded and then they die and they, and they just mm. don't go anywhere because the vision stopped with the, the last rev of the app. And in, in this case, we, we are a fertile mulch, if you will. We, we are the foundational stru- infrastructure that can empower dreams, dreams bigger than my, our own. It just requires the connection between the dream and us to help give them the, fa- the, the, the fabric, what they need in order to flourish. And we'll figure out where the fertilizer is. But we're, we're here. And so, you know, if, you know, 20 years ago, I never envisioned that we'd be doing, I'd be doing this. I had no idea where we'd be going. I didn't know that Vonage would be where Vonage would go. But I, I certainly believed in the future of Internet and future of communications and how that will evolve. Um, I am personally interested in AI and AI-based communication services. I'm interested in how uh, conversational interfaces uh, re- replace browsers, how how access to information will shift over the next 10 to 20 years. The way, you know, if you thought about how inefficient it is to use a web page, if you want to do business right now and you go to someone's website, how crazy is it? It's so difficult. So many clicks. I mean, it's, yeah. just, it's just not the most efficient way. How many billions of hours are wasted every year by going to a website to do commerce? There are better ways, yet <clears throat> we are forced in our habits for what we know. I, I like to think in a, in a, you know, in some ways, in a, in a Star Trek way, that we're here to push the boundaries of how people think, how people connect, how people will do business in the future by providing an open infrastructure that's secure, that's empowered by other people's dreams. And so, no, I have not seen anyone else do this. Uh, and uh, we're, And we're open and humble so that if, as I'm saying, if there's developers who see what we're doing and say, gee, it's, you're good, but what about this? We could at least see, okay, is that on the roadmap? Can we do it now? Is it not possible with our architecture? Should we rethink this? So we're open to listening, but it requires people to you know, look at what we have, and then we look at the dev, and we see what can we do, and what is the time frame for that? So in terms of how we position, you know, I don't position at all on the blockchain space for me because I don't find any comparatives. It's sort of like trying to sell your house but you don't have anyone locally who, who you, whose house you can compare to. So how do you yeah. how do you show comps? So I know what I know in the, in, in the evolution of communication, the evolution of internet communications and for me adding a blockchain component to, blo- to communications is inevitable mm-hmm. and, and is logical and is meaningful. Yeah. And so I, I look at, you know, not just my success in launching Vonage and helping to attract smart people who dream together and collectively we shift the future forward, but it's a part of what needs to happen. And where it goes is unbounded. It, 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 we truly can go where no person has gone before. It's, it's up to the imaginations 
the collective imaginations of our users, of our business partners, of, of their users. And we are the glue and we, we help, you know, fabricate a future, but we're, you know, we're only part of it. You know, they have to do the dreaming too. We're not dreaming this just one-sided. This is a, a multi-party dream where we're helping yeah. to imaginate together and grow. And so, yes, I'm looking for third-party developers to take their apps, to create new apps and to help if help us see the future together with them. And so it's a, it's a big undertaking and has the potential to have a meaningful impact in the future of, of where things go. And awesome, I, I, awesome. I'm excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say like, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't see anyone else in the space doing this. So, um, when, uh, when we were setting up this interview, I was really excited because I didn't think that there was anyone else who was doing this. And uh, I think it's really interesting to give your uh, your take on it and everything that you guys have been doing and sharing that with my audience because I don't think that they've seen anything like this before. So I feel like this is going to be really uh, fresh and, and, a, and a very cool thing for them to kind of dive into. So um, that was those are all the questions that I have. Where can everyone go to learn more about Debrief? I believe they can just go uh, to the website, to uh, debrief.co. Uh, there's an active blog. I, the, the team likes to post on Medium. Uh, and, and really, and they're active on Twitter, too. But they can, Debrief has answers. And uh, there are people who answer questions, too. And it really, you know, if anyone has had a passion to communicate and would like to be part of the communication future, we're happy to talk to them about how they can take what they want to do and see where we can work together and take their you know endpoints and their soft and their imagination and and help it uh, connect to our uh, middleware. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Uh, everyone who's interested in checking out more, make sure you go and check out their website, debrief.co, and uh, follow them on social media. And and again, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm grateful for the opportunity. All right. Awesome. Cheers. Thanks for sticking around. Since you did, please give this video a like. And if you'd like to see more, make sure to subscribe. You can also support me by donating to the addresses below. If you're using an Ethereum wallet, you can send to scottcbusiness.eth. If you're using another wallet like Coinami, Trust Wallet, Atomic Wallet, um, you can send to scottcbusiness.crypto. On both wallets, I accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ripple. If not, a like, a subscribe makes a huge difference as well. And I really appreciate you sticking around this long. And you can find me everywhere under at Scott C Business. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scott C Business, signing off. Cheers.